Hi, everybody. This is Bob Sunday from Tao Stove. Um, you know, I, as I've talked as we've done videos uh, along here early on, you know, I've, I've talked about, you know, my years of experience in, uh, in woodworking. And it's been about 38 years. Um, probably pretty much haven't done anything else. Um, during that period of time, I was also a high school teacher. And, uh, and the one thing about keeping kids excited, I taught them woodworking. Um, keep them safe, keep them excited. Kids like stories. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I use stories in my teaching, uh, things that have happened. Um, my whole dynamic of, of my life as far as in woodworking, it, 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 you never stop learning. Absolutely never stop learning. Uh, you know, the, unless you're at, unless you're building exactly the same thing every day, you're going to learn something. And even if you're building the same thing, you're going to come up with a new idea. And uh, and I've just tried to evolve that concept into the stoves. Come up with a concept, work with it, see something, take it, develop it, and do that. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's like I do a lot of things. I like camping, but there's one thing I like better than camping. That's fly fishing. Um, and I, you know, the, in the situation like that, I carry a stove with me when I'm fly fishing. Um, these things are so light, you can stick them in your vest. Um, matter of fact, some of the, some of what was happening when, when I developed this stove, the Jetson, was to have a stove that was really compact, that I could put in a very small package, and I could just drop it in my vest. And the reason for that was about a year and a half before I even got into these, um, I was fishing in the Southwest, which I wasn't used to fishing. I'm, I'm, an East, I'm a boy grown in the Midwest, spent most of my life in the South, and I learned how to fly fish in the East. And uh, it's a totally different world than fishing here. Um, and I've just kind of had to re-educate myself, um, you know, how to fish here. So I came here in the Southwest, and I came with a lot of concepts that I had for fishing uh, in the East Coast. Well, you know, you can climb across a boulder in the East Coast with a pair of felt shoes on, and you're pretty safe. And uh, and I would I decided, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just wear my felt-soled shoes, and I'm going to hop down the river here, and I'm going to go just like I always did. Well, the problem is in New Mexico, we got basalt. Basalt is a different boulder. Um, it's like glass. And I had no concept of that. And uh, I was fishing probably about an hour's walk down into the canyon on the Rio Grande, on the Red River, which flows into the Rio Grande. And uh, I was just fishing like I always fish in the East Coast. You know, I'd go around, get on a boulder, walk over the boulder, and go. Well, I was traversing this one boulder, and the felt didn't hold. I shot off that thing like I was shot out of a slingshot. Went down hit my head. I knocked myself out. The only thing that, that, that saved me was when I, it was the middle of December and the water was just about frozen. And when I hit that water, it brought me straight back out of whatever was going on. And I woke up real quick, but I did end up with a waders full of water. I was about an hour walk uphill to the truck and I'm in a canyon and it's dark, and it was early. I, I you know, I, I go fishing early in the morning. In the east, I'd go leave to go fishing at four o'clock in the morning and watch the sun come up. And uh, I'm sitting there soaking wet, an hour from the truck, in the middle of a cold hollow. I call it a hollow in the east coast, but it, it's a canyon here. And uh, you know, the, the concept hit me. That, you know, you, dude, you're you're soaking wet, and uh, and it's very very cold here in the morning. Uh, it doesn't mean in the afternoon it can't be 50 degrees, but in the mornings it can be below it can be below freezing, and that's where I was. And uh, I kind of looked around, had to make some decisions about what I was going to do. And the one thing I knew was I probably I could generate heat by walking, but I really didn't know if I could make that hour climb out of the canyon. Uh, you know, your body can turn around once it's cold, and you can, you can five minutes you can be in hypothermia and dropped, and. Uh, so I just decided right there that uh, I wasn't going to try to make the climb. Um, I, I was going to have what I was going to have to do was get myself dried up, and uh, of course I had no matches. I had nothing. The only lucky thing I had going for me was the sun came out, 
and about time, about five, ten, twenty minutes after I'd made the fall in the river, and I was soaking wet, I looked like a rat, um, the sun came out. And when the sun comes out in New Mexico and hits you, it's like you're like one of those little fruit pies in a in a in the in McDonald's sitting under that little heat lamp. It's just it's a totally different thing. So I was lucky. Um, I stripped out of the waders, dropped the clothes down. Great. Somebody comes walking down the trail and I'm standing there buck naked. That's their problem, not mine. I'm going to dry off. So I just did the kind of the, the groundhog possum thing, lay out there in the sun and dried myself off and everything was good. And it just, you know, it started me thinking about, okay, how can you deal with situations like this? And, uh, and it was way before I even got into this. And, and as I started with stoves, I started going, you know, you could take a very light piece of equipment with you, take it in your vest, and if the same situation happens again, and, and don't think it won't happen. Um, there's there's guys up here that'll tell you that, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Straits Fly Fishing up here in Taos, New Mexico, who I don't mind giving some advertisement to. They're great people. Um, the senior straight he's in the fly fishing hall of fame. He's an, he's a guide, you know, he's, he's world renowned. He goes down to South American fishes. Well, I read his book and the one thing he talked about in his book was how many times he'd fell in the river, shot off the boulder and fell in the river. So at least I was in good company. It didn't make me feel so bad about taking a shot into the river. Though I did go from his son and buy a pair of carbide spiked shoes after I made that shot. Let's don't do it any more than we have to. And as I started doing this, I started saying, you know, th this this could work as a safety thing. Um, you know, I you know I could I could carry a small stove with me, a bottle of alcohol fits right in your fly vest. Um, carry a mini pot, carry a little mini twenty made out of a twenty five ounce can. Carry a mini pot with you because the one thing you can do is if you can get the water hot and you can get it boiling and you drink it, you can keep your your core temperature, your body up, and it doesn't take a lot, and that that can that can save you. And in some of these situations here, you know, you can get stuck and be in, in a big heap of problems. So, uh, and so I will, I do say to people, if you're going to fish solo, which, you know, I, my tendency is to do that. And it, it's a lot more dangerous here in, in fishing the bigger rivers, fishing solo. Um, but sometimes you just can't get anybody to go fishing with you. And you're sure as hell not going to stay home and not go fishing just because you can't find anybody to go fishing with. Um, so protect yourself. And, and I, I now, my concept is to always carry a stove with me. Um, and, and some, and people don't really understand because I didn't, what happens out here? Um, I, you know, uh, besides taking a fall in the river, I can be up at, at, at 9,000 feet up in a valley, up in the mountains, and it can be summertime. It can be July, middle of July. It can be 80 degrees, stay in the sun. You can be 90 to 100 degrees stay in the sun if you stand there long enough. But within a five-minute period of time, you can go from 80 degrees down to 30. It'll do it. The sky will turn black, and you look up, and you go, what in the world is going on? And the next thing, you're not in a, a rainstorm. You'll hear the thunderclouds come. You're not in a rainstorm. You're in a slush storm. The temperature drops. The ice starts coming out of the sky. And this is in July. And the and all of a sudden, you're soaked to the bone. Um, and with not rain, with ice. And, and it'll drop you. It can drop you. You know, luckily, most of those places you fish in those situations, you're usually closer to your vehicle. Um, but it can happen. Uh, you know, you, the base, mainly when you see a black uh, cloud coming in this part of the country, first thing you do is, if you got rain gear, put it on. And the second thing is walk way out in the field and stick your fly rod out there in the field by itself. Walk back to the edge of the field and just watch your fly rod. Because as golfers will tell you, graphite shafts are great big old electric rods. And, and lightning rods. And they, you know, if you're standing there with nine feet of lightning rod in your hand and you're soaking wet, you're even in more trouble than you were from just being wet. So you just, it's a totally different world to learn to how to live in. It's actually easier to fish in the wintertime because the it's usually just cold. Um, but that's that's the story about, you know, things like this and 
and as we go along, I'll, I'll kick in some more stories of what happens. They don't always have anything to do with the stoves, but usually in those situations, I go camping, and I use the stoves. I carry them in my truck, and if I'm going to make dinner, I, I make a lot of stoves. I can set three stoves out on the tailgate of the truck and cook dinner. You know, They're fun to use. I use them in the house all the time. Um, so just a little story about what's going on. And, uh, and, you know, hope it, it was humorous enough that it was worth your time to listen to. And, uh, you know, hell, if you got any questions about coming out here and going to the Southwest and go fishing, hey, email me. I'll tell you what I know. Um, that's how you get better at everything. Um, and, and I say to anybody that buys my stoves, anybody, if you take my stove and you use it, and you might see something that will make it better than something that I haven't seen. Um hey, tell me. I'll look at the concept, I'll work it through, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll see what it does. And if it makes it a better product, hey, I'll do it. Um, you know, and, and, and be real honest, I'll, what I'll do is if somebody gives me an idea that really changes a product, and you've already bought one, and you really want it the other way, and, I, and the concept works out, I'll make you a new one. Send me the old one, I'll give you a new one. You know, and I'll give you credit for the idea. Um, so I just, that's the way I work. So thanks a lot for listening to the crazy story. And uh, the next episode will be Bob and the Bear. And that's even better than falling in cold water is Bob and the Bear. So uh, thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you later.